Here are a few more special alkyl groups, little fragments that dangle off of parent chains. And so you need to know these by their names uh, when you see them. Um, they are just very common fragments. And in some of the naming exercises, you will need to use these words as, as part of the name for the whole molecule. This next slide shows some examples. That's a three carbon chain hanging off of a nine carbon chain. And since that three carbon chain has the attachment in the middle of those three carbons, that's why it's isopropyl. And the word for the long chain is no name. Uh, this one below has a tertiary butyl group, a four carbon branch, but it's the carbon in the middle of that little cluster that, that's forming the attachment to that nine carbon chain. So again, sometimes it's a simple methyl group, sometimes it's ethyl, sometimes it's isopropyl. Uh, but a few of these tend to be very commonly encountered. Another aspect of naming is that the carbons don't have to make chains. Sometimes they can make rings. And when we draw these geometric figures like triangles and squares in organic chemistry, that refers to cycloalkanes. Uh, carbons are considered to be at the corners, and they will have, again, hydrogens as well. And so uh, these shorthand formulas are used even more often than, than these other structural formulas. Um, we just have to know that in this class we interpret the corners to be carbons. And if we needed to add in hydrogens, there would be two hydrogens apiece. Because in a ring, all carbons are connected to two other carbons, and therefore would need those two hydrogens. Uh, the five and six membered rings, cyclopentane, cyclohexane, those are by far the most common in nature and we will uh, see those show up a lot as we go along as well. Those rings can have branches just like a chain can have branches and so as you would guess we just modify the names um, in a similar manner. Methyl groups hanging off of a ring are going to have the word methyl in their name just as they would if they were hanging off of a, a straight chain. Um, so uh, at the top we've got methyl cyclopropane and if we're drawing the ring with just corners to represent carbons, then this little line segment, uh, we assume it ends in a carbon as well. So that's a little stick figure that represents methyl cyclopropane. Um, just as we sometimes have to use numbers to locate substituents along chains, we have to do that with rings sometimes. And so with these two methyl groups uh, hanging off of a cyclohexane ring, the one and the two indicates that they are right next to each other. Uh, with a ring, in principle, it, it doesn't matter where we would start numbering our carbons, but certainly we would start if there is a methyl group somewhere. And so uh, no matter which one of these carbons I label as number one, the other is going to be number two. Uh, don't have to necessarily start at the top of the ring. Don't have to go clockwise. Sometimes the, the numbering is backwards, uh, counterclockwise but we still try to use the lowest numbers we can get away with. Um, here's a cyclopentane ring, five carbons, and that ethyl group can either be written as CH2CH3 as it is on the left, or over on the right you can see again we assume that the corners, the, the edges of those line segments, as well as the tips, are carbons themselves. And although it's not quite as common to use those stick figures with chains, they, they can be used that way. So uh, if we draw zigzag lines, we can identify carbons along that chain as well as carbons that would be on the tips. And for something like decane with 10 carbons, that's uh, certainly a handy shortcut. Uh, on the left, is another way to shorten that formula is to write the CH2 with the 8 outside to imply 8 CH2 groups all in sequence. Um, this one at the bottom uh, again can be drawn as a stick figure like on the right or it can be drawn like you see on the left and notice it's named as a pentane because up here in the top left corner that's not really part of a branch that's really the first carbon in five in a row because if I start counting there I can identify this first CH3 is the first carbon in pentane and then we go 2, 3, 4, and 5 and these two methyl groups hanging here down towards the bottom are branches off of that parent chain.